Fatwa, Hunted in America by Pamela Geller. Geller, a Jewish gal growing up in New York, was soon to realize 9-11 was a wake-up call to the naive West. Yet the media, as well as most political leaders in the U.S., kept pushing the snooze button on the alarm. This book chronicles Pamela's search for answers midst all the spin and deception this topic entails. With a foreword by Dutch politician Gert Wilders, one can see immediately that she has connections with some of the most influential voices in the field of critical thinking. Most in the West will find it a concerted effort to make sense of Muslim theology, but Geller was quick to find other experts in the field, such as Robert Spencer, who were able to help her connect the dots. While Muslim history has been whitewashed and at times glorified, Pamela soon found that shining the light of truth on the subject makes one a target of not only ridicule by leftist liberals, but of jihadis who are willing to carry out the fatwa, or murder, of those who are critical of the Muslim religion. Both jihad and fatwa are terms of war. When an influential Muslim Imam or Sheikh proclaims a fatwa against someone, that means they are to be silenced by whatever means Allah's little helper may find suitable. Those of us old enough to remember, 9-11 was followed by Muslims attempting to build a mosque overlooking the site of what was once the Twin Towers. Following the pattern of history, they had chosen the name Cordova, which smacks of the invasion and occupation of Spain from the year 711 until they were driven out in 1492. Geller was quick to connect the dots. When Muslims invade a country, it has been a common practice to build a large mosque or convert prior religious sites or churches as a statement of superiority as they did in Jerusalem and in Constantinople. Pamela was one of those voices sounding the alarm at ground zero. Of course, with this comes accusations of racism, hatred, and intolerance. Don't get confused me with the truth. In January of 2015, in the wake of the massacre of the Muhammad cartoonist of Charlie Hebdo in Paris, Pamela Geller organized a Draw Muhammad contest in Garland, Texas to let the world know that we're not going to bow to the pressure of Muslim thugs who threaten our free speech and freedom of expression. When two Muslim jihadis showed up at the art contest with guns loaded for infidels, the seriousness of the ordeal became obvious. They wounded one security officer before being killed. Get the picture? This is war. Leading up to all of this, Geller was able to make the connection that the OIC, or Organization of Islamic Cooperation, is a group of 57 nations, Muslim nations that is, whose main focus is to neutralize critical thinking and criticism of Islam on a global stage. They happen to be the loudest voice in the United Nations and are quick to target anyone who makes fun of the Prophet Muhammad in a cartoon. The OIC is the Muslim effort to resurrect the World Caliphate, which collapsed when the Ottoman Empire died after the First World War. Their reach is far and wide, and connected to many Muslim groups in the West, such as CARE, the Council on American Relations. Criticize Islam publicly in America, and you will get CARE's attention immediately. What started as a simple blog called Atlas Shrugs, from which Geller would comment on jihad activity in the news, grew into a global platform for those sharing information about Muslim history and ideology and how to combat it. When practice of honor killings of young women in Canada and America begin to show up in the news, Geller and her connections begin to speak out. While the Muslim world turns a blind eye to fathers who murder their daughters for not wearing the hijab or leaving the faith, Geller and her friends plot in an effort to give honor to these poor girls and provide an underground means of escape. 
read about her battle for a headstone. Pamela's experience should be a lesson to us all. Knowledge is power, but knowledge is nothing if it remains hidden. Headed for big trouble if you watch the news. While lapdog liberals in the media and Muslims have attacked her character, she has learned not to be intimidated. Because of being outspoken about Islam, she has been added to the list of those forbidden entry to Britain and labeled the most dangerous woman in America. And while education is supposed to be the motive of colleges and universities, she has found that educating people about Islam is not at the top of the list. The reason is, many have been bought by powerful oil-rich countries. Free speech is a dangerous thing for Islam. When she began the effort of running ads exposing the evils of Islam on public transit buses in several American cities, she found herself fighting it out in court. The San Francisco Municipal Transportation forbid free speech on their buses in 2017, advertising, quote, political and cause-related issues are now rejected in New York, Washington, D.C., Boston, Miami, and Chicago. My suggestion for anyone concerned about American values or our Judeo-Christian heritage is to read this book, Fatwa, and get the facts straight about who our real enemy is. Islam is not your friend. Devils in the details. Don't confuse me with the truth. Don't confuse me with the truth. Don't confuse me with the truth.